Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond the Summit weekend of fun. We're kicking things off here with, well, it's a fistful of tangos. It's been a long time coming. People have been asking us, bugging us time in, time out again. We had a small delay when there was the patch with the 1v1 mode. Then, well, we had a small delay preparing for this weekend. We've had a couple big announcements coming out. We've had some big plans and actions. And well, part of it is, well, this end of the Fistful of Tangos. We've got the Beyond the Summit Weekend Cup. And more importantly, we are looking to do a Beyond the Summit eSports broadcast studio, as you guys are now aware. But anyways, guys, we're going to focus on what we're, we're looking at here today. This event, the Fistful of Tangos, which... Well, I, I think I've actually forgotten the rules, forgotten who's playing, forgotten the brackets and everything because it's been so long. I don't know about you guys, but uh, just a quick recap of what's going on. We've got a 700 US dollar prize reward for an eight player 1v1 tournament here. We've got eight of the best 1v1 players in Europe and America. You can see some of them there. You can see those of which have been knocked out. Funnick, Kuroki, Merlini, and Korok all taking an early exit, which leaves us with Fear, Sindarin, Sing Sing, and S4 left as your final four 1v1 battlers. We're just going to take a quick recap of the rules, uh, more for my own benefit than yours, I should say, um, as it will actually help me go through this game once we get into it. Um, quick recap, no bottle crowing, no soaring, and no using of neutrals allowed whatsoever. Apparently that means you can't use Helm of the Dominator on them. It's not just farming them. There was a bit of a mishap with that in one of the previous Sing Sing matches, but that's now been clarified. You get an extra 150 gold at the start for your courier. And then you have your hero selection process, basically, the two players are given three possible matchups, which you'll see later on once we get to this first matchup of the day. Uh, they get both get to veto one matchup secretly, so there's a chance they veto the same matchup, or they veto different matchups. If they veto different matchups, the matchup they play is the remaining matchup. If they veto the same matchup, then we have a coin flip and see which of the two remaining matchups will be used, and then they play both sides of it. So first to two kills, first to two towers, whichever you get to first, is the winner. It does go on until then. We've seen some games go 30 or 40 minutes, I believe, in the previous round. We had a less track versus Shadow Shaman and Funnick versus Sing Sing. Uh, but most of the games tend to be pretty quick. In the 5 to 15 minute mark, as someone gets off to an early lead and gets those kills early on and just sort of starts to snowball out of control. Um, if it does tie 1-1, one, one, we have your Game 3. This is the new best of three format that we change. So Game 3 is your 1v1 Shadow Fiend, your old school classic 1v1 matchup at mid. Um, the side, I believe, is randomized. And, well, it's basically no items, no runes. So you're allowed runes in the previous one, but no runes for the 1v1 Shadow Fiend. We want it purely about laning, uh, harass, as well as last hitting. That's all it's going to come down to. No rune involvement whatsoever. This isn't like... You're, we want it, With the first two games, we wanted to try and mirror a 1v1 scenario in the mid lane. Obviously, there's no other heroes coming in. But we want it to be like a typical 1v1 duel at mid lane where runes come into play and uh, some rune control is important. But with the 1v1 SF, it's all about who is the better laner, who is the better last thing, and harass. And this is just one kill or one tower. Basically, if you get the first kill, you've won anyways. And if it goes to the point where you're not getting kills, the tower will be the decider. So we're going to look at our bracket here. This is a quick recap of where we at, where we've been, and who's been knocked out, where and when. We had our winner bracket go through. Sindarin cruising through the winner bracket, the top half of the winner bracket, with Fear going through the bottom half. Sindarin taking out both Molini as well as Korok. Somewhat surprised by him taking out Korok personally, but he did a great job there. 2-0 in Korok, in fact, before falling to the loser bracket, losing to Fear in the winner bracket final. So Fear is awaiting in the grand finals, basically, whoever comes through this loser bracket, which has seen a couple more victims fall. We had Funnick falling to Sing Sing in a really close best of three. It did go the distance. We did have to see the SF versus SF matchup. Uh, we had Korok uh, dropping down to the loser bracket, losing to S4. And then here we are, S4 versus Sing Sing. This is your first loser bracket final then we have the second loser bracket final where Sindarin is waiting and we're going to have a look at what were the three matchups given to these players uh, it was a while back I'm trying to remember what it actually was and here we go we mixed things up a bit we actually included a hero who's been recently added to the CM pool Silencer so we threw Silencer versus Queen of Pain Silencer with his last word very very annoying we had Pudge versus SF a matchup we saw earlier on in the tournament which was actually a, a pretty fast paced very close matchup basically if Pudge hits a hook he can win if if he doesn't, well, most likely he's going to lose out on farm. So he has to go all in for those hooks. And I think that was when S4, I'm sorry, Sing Sing actually lost. I remember him playing Pudge, desperately looking for hooks and just unable to get them. He lost a really close epic match. And then finally, we have the Leshrac versus Windrunner matchup. 
Uh, a sort of two staple sort of old school mid heroes, not really heroes you see much in the mid lane, but very strong laning heroes as your third and possible matchup. So basically, we gave the two players these three matchups, then they message us a veto so they can just say privately which one they want, and then we figure out what matchup we're going to play. End of the day, we contacted the player, saw what happened. Both players did not want to touch the Queen of Pain versus Silencer. They said no sirree. Silencer is just a pain to lane against, or maybe they just didn't think he could go up against Queen of Pain, but the new last word was absolutely horrible. And so we got the Pudge versus SF, and that's where we're going to go here. That's where we're at with game number one. Sing Sing on the Radiant side SF. Dire side, we're going to see S4 playing the Pudge, and we're going to see how this pans out now, guys. This is your Fistful of Tango's match. I'm not going to talk for too long for you. I'm not going to talk off your ears. We're going to get right into the action now with game number one, guys. So stay tuned. Sing Sing versus S4 coming up now. Hey guys, welcome to a fistful of Tango's game one between Sing Sing and S4. Part of my little mishap there, as uh, apparently I fail completely at using X, but we are here in game number one. S4 playing on the dire side as the Pudge. We've got Sing Sing on the Radiant playing the Shadow Fiend. 1v1, game one. Game two, they switch heroes, switch sides, and if they do draw 1-1, one, one, if they decide one hero wins both matchups, as uh, it has happened a couple of times, we've had a few 2-0s, uh, but sometimes we do get those 1-1 one, one draws, especially in matchups that are potentially a bit on a one-sided note. Uh, then we do go to that game three, 1v1 SF. We're seeing both heroes go for a big stroll around the enemy side of the map, basically courier hunting. They know Couriers are going to look to scout runes. Couriers may be looking to block creep waves, which is what both players are actually going to be doing. They've got the couriers in the lane looking to block the creep wave. If Sing Sing actually went around, he could snipe this courier, but we're not going to be seeing that right now. It, uh, it looks like he is just going to be looking to wait. He, he may actually look to snipe it as it comes out on the first creep wave, maybe expecting this courier block. I would be shocked if that's the case, but this could be some next level players coming out of Sing Sing. He's waiting for it. He's still waiting. I don't know if he saw the last replay, because this is something S4 did in his last matchup. He used the courier to block while his hero actually checked the rune. I think Sing Sing, Sing, Sing is onto this. He's going to see this courier. He's going to get himself some early gold here. Grand courier run. Oh no. Terrible disaster. The micro from the courier just pulls it back. And here comes Pudge with the rod. Sing Sing is in all kinds of trouble here. This could be the fastest 1v1 game we've ever seen. The rot is going to stay on him. He can't get out of it. He doesn't need to attack. He just needs to chase him with the rot. S4 going to get first blood. 28 seconds in. Sing Sing is absolutely loving it. S4. Oh man, even if he gets that courier, Sing Sing's in trouble. He could snipe the courier, but getting out of there, S4 was in the right place at the right time. Sing Sing, buddy, please. That is not how you want to start your 1v1 matchup here. Game number one, Sing Sing, well, he's in all sorts of trouble. Stout Shield already out for the pud, so that's going to block a lot of the... Oh, I think he actually started with that. It's his bottle. Okay, he's got his bottle coming out right off the bat. He's also almost hit level three, so this... Basically, Pudge can just go for a hook, maybe level... Th if he hits a hook at level 3, that's a, probably a dead SF. He can dive under the tower, go for those kills here. And Sing Sing is going to have to be playing so carefully. And this is a matchup where I, you give the slightest of edge to the SF. If SF plays it smart, Pudge can't kill him. He shouldn't be able to hook him. So if SF plays it smart, he has the edge. But problem is, Sing Sing's just throwing away the, uh, the advantage that SF has by giving S4 this kill. This game has suddenly become S4's to lose. Unless he can, basically it's going to say hit a hook S4 you win the game You don't have to kill him twice. It's now just once and he's going to kill you twice Something that can be very hard to do and even if you get behind in farm as a pudge as well, I actually do recall to put up the CS charts even if you get behind it in CS Well, you can quickly come back just with one kill hook him under your tower with a dismember and suddenly you've got the kill And S4 is just going to go all in for this. He's rotten and just going right onto Sing Sing not going to get this kill here He does have the south. Oh! Second long range, that narrowly misses. That could have been S4's death. That could have actually been the turnaround that Sing Sing needed. Problem is for Sing Sing now, he went for the kill, didn't get it, and he's completely out of mana. If S4 goes on him again, he doesn't have those raises to use to scare off S4. And S4, he's going to be feeling pretty comfortable about this position right now. He does, have, does actually have to chew through all of that regen, but, well, 
He gets a couple more creeps, and now he's going to go looking for a rune. He's going to find an illusion rune at bottom, and this for Sing Sing is going to be problematic. He's, I believe, got his bottle now. Nope, he's gone for the boots. He's gone straight into the boots, knowing he needs some movement speed to help deal with this Pudge hook, make sure he doesn't get nailed by it. And he knows that Pudge's boots are probably coming up soon as well. 411 gold. That's going to be boots coming right away for Pudge. And with this illusion rune bottle, he's got plenty of mana to work with. He can just start throwing hooks and hoping. Not much Sing can do except play as defensive as possible. And the problem is, the one thing that SF normally has over Pudge is his ability to completely outfarm Pudge. But when you can't go near the creep wave, really, it makes it so difficult for Sing Sing to actually farm in lane. And he can sort of go maybe on par with the Pudge. But right now, he's actually behind by a creep one last hit. He has got the additional deny, but this could go very bad for Sing Sing fast as S4. He's got the dream start. He, he's just hooking creeps. That was not even coming close. I don't even think he was aiming at Sing Sing there. I think he was just happy to get the creep and be on with it, knowing that he's going to use this illusion rune in a sec. He's going to use, probably use the illusion rune, send one to scout the rune, and keep the other one in lane. Or maybe just send them both off the rune so he knows exactly what rune it is. And Sing Sing, unless he preemptively guesses where the rune is going to spawn, he doesn't stand a chance of getting it. And if he does guess it, maybe he gets hooked on his way going to rune. So it's a very dangerous risk to take. And... It's pretty much guaranteed that S4 can get this 4-minute rune, unless Sing Sing really sort of just backs off early and then goes off to scout the rune. But even then, it's very dangerous. S4, he's just fishing. He's just throwing and hoping. He knows he doesn't have to hook this. He's got this mana to spare. He's going already back to full mana, and he's just going to rely on getting that 4-minute rune, have the additional mana, and just keep throwing hooks. He's not worried. All he has to do is hit one hook in 20, and he wins this matchup. So Sing Sing, he's just going to be completely flawless with his play from here on out. And that's what we're going to have to try try and see if he can do. He's Oh, he knows it's top. He's actually going to get it. He, he gets, well, I, I say lucky, but... It was, actually, no, it was a bit lucky. Lucky, And uh, S4 misses up the deny. He could have actually gone for that deny. Doesn't do so. So Sing Sing with a double damage rune. This will help him out a lot. This is something which uh, will get Sing sort of back into this game. Making sure S4 doesn't get that 4-minute rune. Because S4, you can't bottle crow. There's no bottle crowing allowed in this, and that, make, that means S4 is stuck with this empty bottle until the 6 minute mark where he has to try and hope and get another rune, so suddenly things not looking as bad for Sing Sing. He does have mana now as well, 3 raises up his pocket which is important. S, S4, you can't really go in when he's got those raises. If you're walking in, he hits you with a mid range and you get close, he hits you with a melee range, suddenly you're basically below half HP and even with a hook and a rot you may lose out on that fight, so S4. This is important for Sing Sing. Keep him low. Use the long range as early as possible. Problem is, oh, middle range, not going to do enough damage. S4 does nail the hook from melee range, and S4 gets a second kill very, very fast, right off the bat, and a five minute victory in game one going the way of S4. And that means we go into game two, guys, as S4 takes game number one, guys. What a fantastic, fantastic performance from his. Anyways, guys, we'll be back soon with game number two S4 versus Sing Sing. They're going to switch sides. Switch heroes, and we're going to see if Sing Sing can come back from this 1-0 deficit.